You have to understand, Mr. Drexler, we are really disappointed. We were happy to find the school. Really, we were. I said to my wife, I said, who would have thought we'd find such a good, grounded Christian school? And right in the middle of Europe, too. But since we're sending our daughter to a Christian school and... and paying all that tuition. Right. We did have certain expectations. Is it too much to ask that the chaplain study the Bible with our girl? We did. Almost every week. You did? What did she learn then? Don't you think reading God's Word should be an open-ended process? Mr. Drexler, in my years as a teacher, I've learned that Bible study, like any kind of study, works best with a clear goal and set milestone to measure progress. Nothing nurtures spiritual growth like tight surveillance. <laughs> I see your sour attitude is rubbing off on Emma. I think she's learned enough from you. Dad! No more studies. And we'll be speaking to your superior about this. Well, everything is settled then. There's really no reason for you to overstay your welcome. Of course this isn't personal, Mr. Drexler. I understand. Thank you for your time and God bless America. Nice tie. What was a gift? From the Blind Children's Foundation? You seem tired, Alex. What are you doing here, Dean? You've been ignoring my calls all morning. <laughs> I was in the middle of a session. What do you want me to do? Let Lena take over? Your attitude has gotten completely out of control. You need to pull it together if you... Oh. What? Are you going to fire me? At the beginning of the semester, your only chaplain? That's the thing. You're not the only chaplain. Not anymore. Excuse me? The college is growing. We needed to expand the team. I am the team. And without me knowing, there can be no changes to the team. Which, by the way, the team doesn't need. Because the team has coped very well for the last 20 years. You have talked about quitting at least twice every year of those 20. Yeah, and me quitting is the only hope you have, right, Dean? Because the administration won't let you fire me. Well, this time I just might. Just say the word. about this? They just came ten minutes ago and put it on the door. Dr. Serrano. <sighs> I bet he's some smarter straight from the ivory tower. I need to get some fresh air. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, is this the chaplain's office? Yes, but I have to run. Just talk to Lena in there. She'll give you an appointment. Yeah, but... Good morning. How can I help you, dear? My name is Sofia Serrano. I'm the new chaplain. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Today is my first day, right? Yes, yes. It's just... Is it possible to get a PhD that quickly? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you're sweet. <laughs> and you're right. I was the youngest in my class. I thought you were a student. <laughs> Welcome to Wesley College. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I really feel like the Lord has led me here. Let me show you your office. <sighs> this is it. <laughs> It's beautiful. Ah. Ah, I can't wait 
it all then? <laughs> but first, I need to pray over this room. I'll let you get settled in. I'd better go and find him. Dios, muchísimas gracias por bendecirme con una gran educación y por la oportunidad de transmitir todo lo que he aprendido. Ayúdame a guiar a los estudiantes hacia Jesús y a sembrar en ellos el amor por tu palabra. Amén. Hey. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I was just kind of lost in what I was looking at. I know the feeling. Can I help you with anything? Nah, I'm good. I was gonna see the chaplain, but he didn't show. Do you want to talk to me instead? <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> So, tell me about yourself. Well, name's Walid, and I'm new here. Just transferred to Wesley. You? We have something in common then. I'm also new. Really? Today is my first day as chaplain. <laughs> Wait. Chaplain? You're Dr. Serrano? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I thought you were a grad assistant. Nice to meet you, Willie. Why did you want to see a chaplain? I don't want to. I have to. Academic probation. Got kicked out of my last college. What for? Not showing up, failing classes. You're not interested in school? No. Why is that? It's crazy. I'm supposed to put all my time and energy and money into all these classes that I don't like, right? And then I have to get a degree and a job that I don't want. And then they say to work for the rest of my life so I can support a family and the whole thing can start all over again. People just throw themselves into this hamster wheel life like it means something. And they say I'm the one with the problem. You want one? <laughs> I can't eat anything I like. I haven't got your metabolism. Dr. Serrano has arrived. She is settling in nicely. She? Well, maybe not as smart as from the ivory tower after all. Well, her PhD is in systematic theology. Are you kidding me? You gonna go and say hello? Mm. Not now. I have an appointment. Should be here already, actually. So, how would life, according to Walid, look like? I don't know. Oh. The hamster wheel keeps me too busy. There is no time to find your... Purpose? Nah, please. I prefer the word goal. Not as dramatic. No. A goal is not a purpose. Making lots of money can be a goal for your life. Well, then that's your purpose. If you make that your purpose, it will destroy you. Kind of an ironic statement to make in the financial capital of the EU. <sighs> a 
if I wanted to hang a picture here, I could pound in the nail with my phone, right? It would work at first, but then the phone would be damaged. It's not the purpose of a phone to hit nails. That's what a hammer is for. The phone has another purpose. You're right. That's a good spot for a picture. It's just, a phone was made for a reason. Sure, but people having a maker, I don't buy that. I could respect that. But, Pedro, for me, there's so much beauty everywhere. Just take a look at the world. Isn't it obvious? I don't know what world you're talking about. I went to Pakistan the summer before college to visit my mom's relatives. And the slums I saw there. Almost half the people in Karachi are living in. There's nothing glorious in certain parts of Orangi town. Trust me. Look, survival of the fittest. It's the only thing that makes sense. Because if someone actually made all that stuff happen... I have an idea. What? Sometime this week, I want you to spend an hour out in nature. More homework? <laughs> it's not homework. It's a favor. Can you do me a favor? Sure. <laughs> Great. So, go out into the woods or whatever you like for one hour. No phones. And bring back something beautiful to our next meeting. Yes? I'll try. Walid, there you are. Wait, what were you two doing in that office? We were just having a session. Never mind, I don't want to know. Uh, didn't you say Dr. Serrano was in there? Oh, that is Dr. Serrano. Sofia Serrano, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, Alex Drexler. You aged well. Uh, so, Walid. Dr. Serrano is not bad. See you next week. Bye, Walid. What was that all about? What? He had an appointment with me. Yes, and he told me that you weren't there, so I covered for you. <clears throat> Listen, Sophia. May I call you Sophia? I don't want to make a big fuss about it, but since you have decided you want to become a chaplain, let me explain something that will help you wherever you end up working. I don't know where you did your studies, but this is not some mission school in the Amazon Basin. The people who work here are professionals and adhere to certain standards. Standards? Like leaving students waiting in an abandoned office? Standards like respecting the counseling process. You interfered with my client. He was about to leave. He would have returned. You don't know that. And I'm not going to stand by and watch him miss a chance to turn his life around. I don't know about you, but I have a responsibility to God and a pardon for the souls of the students here. She's here to save the world. This is getting better and better. I wonder how we have managed without her so far. This guy is on academic probation, so he's going to sit his down for his meeting every week. Nothing less and nothing more. Your spiritual fervor is completely out of place. Well, Dean said this is exactly what the chaplaincy team needed. I am the chaplaincy team, and I sure as hell don't need this. I'm sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. No, but I am. This 
spiritual gifts. Oh, thank you. What? Hi. Sorry. Are you the chaplain? No. Where is Mr. Drexler? He no longer works here. And you are? I'm Alex Drexler. I just quit my job. So don't come in. But you are still a man of God, right? What do you mean? I'm here for spiritual warfare. Oh. I've just got the person for you then, right next door. I need to talk to you. My friend told me you helped her. Let me guess. You're halfway through college only to find out you don't like business administration. But starting over now would set you back several years in classes, many more years in loans, and land you in some artsy, low-paying job you might not like even better. All for one glorious moment of independence. I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry? That was pretty good, though. That was me last year, so... Props for that. <clears throat> you're... You're dying. Yeah. I have maybe six months. Um, I'm sorry. Um, please, um... Uh, Jessica. Jessica. Uh, how... I have cancer. My liver. FHCC. It's rare and there's no real symptoms, so I just thought I had the flu a lot. They didn't catch it till stage four. Like me. Uh, Jessica, I'm really sorry to hear that. What are your options now? I've had surgery and I'm in my second round of chemo. They try to sound hopeful, but you can see it in their eyes. You've been to the University Hospital in Heidelberg? Mm-hmm. Have you met Captain Waltz? Maybe. I'm not good with no. names, and there are a lot of doctors. You would remember Karen. Let me give you her card so you can ask for her next time. I don't need a psychiatrist. It's Mr. Drexler, I'm not depressed or having a nervous breakdown. I have cells growing inside my body that are going to kill me. So no, I don't care if my father was absent or if being an only child has impacted my coping skills. I want to stay alive. And I don't think your shrink friend can help. That's why I need you. Me? to help me, to ask God to heal me. Jessica, I'm, I'm happy to pray with you and for you, but you need to know that while God has the power to heal you, that doesn't mean he will. You don't think God can heal me? I didn't say that, but you know, the way God works isn't always something we can understand. I know, I know. I'm not some nominal Christian suddenly turning desperate. I'm a believer. I grew up in the church. Our pastor Isaiah, he was, he was a man of God. He took us on a mission trip to Nigeria and they brought a woman with a tumor the size of an orange. Doctor said there's nothing they could do, but Isaiah, Isaiah prayed for her. 
I promise you, every soul in that clinic felt God come down from heaven to listen. The next morning, she felt better and wanted to leave, so the doctors came to check. And the tumor was gone. I know God can heal me. I've seen him do it. Miss, I see you seems to have the special connection you're looking for. Why don't you talk to him? Can't. Why not? He's gone. Went to his funeral last year. I'm sorry. Me too. So you see why I need you. Jessica, I really don't know if I can help you. Please. God can heal me. I know it. It's in the Bible. If two of you agree on earth, we are two. God will do it if we agree. Jessica, sometimes the best, the kindest, the, the brightest people in the world just die and there's, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm sorry, Jessica, that's just my experience. Well, no offense, but did you believe that God would really do it? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed by the wind. He should not expect okay, to receive Okay, it's time for you to go. Go. So you're not gonna help me. Call me when you make up your mind. Tú sabes que yo he soñado con este día pa. Muchísimo tiempo, muchísimo. Mi compañero Alex me odia. Sí, me odia. Yo sé que Dios me trajo aquí, que este es el lugar donde me quiere. Jessica? How are you feeling okay? Yeah. Just had another dose of chemo this week. 
okay if I put my feet up a little? Sure. Sigmund Freud would have laughed it. What's up with the painting? What about it? Did you paint it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Salvador Dali did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you mean I'm, I'm flattered? <laughs> Why'd you put it up, though? I saw it in a museum in Köln once. In the middle is Dali himself. He's falling. I think that captures the feeling of people in the 21st century. We've lost our footing in a pluralistic world. Nothing to hold on to anymore. It's like... He's frozen in time. Constantly falling, never landing. Sounds scary. Yeah. How about you? Do you feel like in a free fall right now? A little bit. Maybe. I mean, I'm holding on to God and I'm, I'm safe in his hand and all. But in terms of people, everyone keeps yanking the carpet out from under my feet. How so? Because they don't believe that God can still intervene. People tell you that? Not directly. They're too hypocritical for that. They tell me to prepare in case I don't get healed. But that uh, doesn't mean they think he can't do it. It only means they think he might not do it. I don't believe in an evil God. It's not biblical. Looks good in here. Oh! Man, my heart is racing. I get that a lot. <laughs> no, you don't. You found a picture. Yes, I did. Shema Israel. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Ehad. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Is that Arabic? Hebrew, from the Old Testament. Sounded like the Quran. What about that one? Tzedek. Tzedek Tirdof. Justice. Justice you shall pursue. That one I like. Not much of our Lord, our God guy. Hmm. I thought you didn't believe in purpose. What do you mean? Well, you just sounded like Fighting for justice would be a worthy purpose. But last time, you denied that there is such a thing. Hang on. I said that purpose is just a fancy word for goal. But I do believe in goals. I'm just not into all that supernatural stuff. There is no cosmic controller. We choose our own purpose. This world is too messed up to be part of anyone's plan. You know that factory that collapsed in Bangladesh and more than a thousand people died? Or the one that caught on fire with the workers inside? My mom was born in Bangladesh, back when it was still a part of Pakistan. She was lucky enough to get out, but if she hadn't, it could have been her, trapped under the rubble or suffocating in the smoke. Just saw some greedy westerner could buy a t-shirt that they're never going to wear. So yes, I care about justice. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so worked up. 
It's quite all right. I, uh, I went into nature. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was nice, actually. Peaceful. Primordial, maybe. And did you bring something beautiful? Well... Ta-da! So, you went out into nature for one hour. And this is what you found? You don't think it's beautiful? No, I didn't say that. I think all nature is beautiful. I'm just curious to know us why you chose this. Because I agree, all of nature is beautiful, or none of it. There's no difference, really. But don't you feel differently when you walk through a lush green forest instead of a brown dead one? I do, but that's just a trick of evolution, right? A lush forest promises food and water, animals to hunt and bushes for protection. That's why we feel drawn to it. We can't truly judge the beauty of nature if our subconscious survival instincts keep getting in the way. What is it with you and deconstructing everything? But did you feel good being out in creation? Sure. My ancestors lived out there for 300,000 years. So, there is no creator? No, there is not. And there is no universal purpose to human life? Nope. And there's no beauty? Not in the conventional sense of the word. Then why were you so upset about Bangladesh? Well, if everything is just a function of evolution, then you shouldn't care. I didn't say that. It's the logical conclusion. Don't check it now, now. No, 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 no. Nothing is beautiful or ugly. Nothing is good or evil. If a cheap t-shirt gets me a mating partner with superior genes, I'll take it any day. And I don't give a shit about your mom in some sweatshop on the other side of the world. Stop it. I'm just repeating what you said. You were twisting my words. It's messed up. You don't know what it's like to see this stuff up close. I was born in Cali. That's on the western coast of Colombia. Our family had a small farm halfway between Cali and Buenaventura. <sighs> Unfortunately, the guerrilla, they wanted our land to grow coca, cocaine. They came with two jeeps, armed to their teeth, but my father told them no. I was just six at the time. They came again, shot our goats, and took all our chickens. But my father did not budge. One day, me, Papa didn't come back from the fields. My older brother, my mother and I went to the police. But they had no answer. In the evening, when we returned from the police station, the chips came back. And they set our house on fire. So, we started walking into the night with nothing else but the clothes we were wearing. We reached Cali in the morning, then begged on the street for two days for money for the bus to Bogota. Our distant relatives let us stay in a small room that was twice the size of that couch. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to say that I don't believe in God because I've been shielded from evil. I believe in God 
because I know it will exist. When you were so young, I would have also made up a deity for support. You have an answer for everything. Well, almost. Last time, I asked you for something beautiful. Your next assignment is to think of something that you don't understand. What's this? An attempt at changing the subject? Seriously, is this the main color set? Just put it back. It is. Can we play it while we talk? No. Come on, why not? Maybe next time. It's too late today. Plus, you have something to look forward to. You sound like my mother. Is that good or bad? A little bit of both, I guess. <sighs> We're very different. She's in the military. US AG Wiesbaden. Even if you didn't know, you could tell by the way she runs the house or talks to me. <laughs> this one time, while I was still in high school, I brought home this boy I liked. And my mom was waiting in full uniform and grilled him like, what are your intentions with my daughter, young man? <laughs> Poor Noah. <laughs> he was this young, you know, nice German gymnasiast. My mom was way too intense for him. She made him say yes ma'am and no ma'am. That was our last date. <laughs> so your mother raised you all by herself? Yeah. I don't know my dad. They met in the army, but it didn't work out. My mom moved back in with her parents to take care of me until I started school. I think she still resents that it cost her her career. She'll always be outranked by people younger than herself. How's she doing with all this? Don't know. <clears throat> you don't talk to her about it? We don't talk that often. Every time we do, we fight. About what? <laughs> Seriously, everything. School, life, boys, jobs. The way I chew my food, it doesn't matter. So you're in this all by yourself? Doctor's appointments? Treatment decisions? How do you even manage? If there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to ask. All I need is for you to lay siege to the throne of God with me. Like, like the old widow in Jesus' parable. Her persistence gets a... Oops. I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were busy. Or should I just... I always thought a closed door is a pretty universal signal for privacy. Maybe I'll get a sign. Sorry again. Aren't you the new chaplain? Yes, yes I am. Hey, can I run a question by you real quick? I think it's better if you ask Alex. Are you good at praying? I like to think I am, see? <laughs> Great, come in. Perfect. I'm Sophia. <laughs> Jess, so the thing is, I have cancer. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Don't... Thank you. If there is anything you need. Yes. Yes. I need a miracle. Do you believe in miracles? Yes, of course. Have you seen one happen? Many times. <laughs> well, you're about to witness another one when I get healed. Jessica, we talked about this. <sighs> the chaplain and I have a little disagreement here. For me, this is not optional. But God is not a vending machine where you throw in a little faith and, and get whatever you want. First of all, 
I'm not of little faith. On the contrary, second of all, I'm not asking for a new phone or a, a better grade or a... I'm asking for my life. The Lord is good all the time. So why would he not give me my life? I mean, he who would not spare his son, won't he also give us everything else? I really feel for you, Jess. I do. And I'm sure that God will heal you. <laughs> but you've taken that last Bible quote out of context. The point Paul is making in Romans 8 is that God will surely give eternal life to those who believe in Jesus. It would not make sense for God to die on the cross and then not come back and get those he has redeemed. And your point is? Do you really believe what Paul is saying? I'm sorry, are you questioning my faith in no, the word? Are you I kidding? I don't need to offend you, Jess, and I'm not questioning your spirituality. I'm merely trying to understand. If you are saved, then why are you so stubborn about getting healed? Why don't you have peace? So just because I'm not willing to bite the dust at 20, I'm a bad Christian? She didn't mean it that way. I totally understand that you're looking for a band-aid for this temporary problem. Me but you... dying is a temporary problem. I don't want to stop. focus on you just, dying. I want to focus on stop. you. Stop. You've all given up on me. No one gives up. But to make it sound pious, I've come across so far. Jessica, wait. I, I come to you asking for help for a way out of this, and you literally tell me my life doesn't matter. Jessica, I'm sorry about this. Are you happy now? Are you satisfied with the way you helped her? No, of course not. Let me go get her. I can explain Absolutely it to her. Absolutely not. You barged on my appointment, hijacked my time, and caused my student to flee. You've done more than enough. So that's it? You're just going to let her run away? No. I'm giving her time and space to process. Someone who she thought was going to help her has just told her that her death was inconsequential. You know that's not what I meant. But that's what she understood. How can she understand that? I said that God would surely heal her. Thanks for reminding me. Were you going for most blunders in one session? Do you not see that something is driving her? Some unfinished business? Here. Chaplaincy 101. You should read it sometime. We advocate the spiritual welfare of all students, whether they express our faith, another faith, or no faith at all. So bickering about exegetical details with a terminal ill student is not part of our job description. And neither is interrupting someone else's session. Now, if you'll excuse me. in your office. She wanted to speak to you specifically, so I asked her to wait in there. I don't think I'm ready for another challenge. You'll be fine. Have a cup of coffee. Thank you. Something wrong? No, no. Um... But this was just unexpected. Uh -huh. um, a different flavor than the Colombian coffee I'm used to. Yes, it's okay. But thank you very much. I'm Sophia. Victoria, nice to meet you. Likewise. We can make an appointment for later if you're busy right now. I mean, I'm sure you're always busy. That's not what I meant. 
It's all right, Victoria. Thanks. I, um, I wanted to talk to someone. I was getting up the courage to go see Mr. Drexler, but then I heard in assembly that you were here, and I got the stupid idea that I should just walk in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not stupid at all. I'm glad you came. What can I do for you? Well, um, I guess I'm looking for, I don't know, advice? Sorry if this isn't the right place for that. You are definitely in the right place. Advice, questions, concerns, whatever it is, we're here for you. Oh, thanks. Um, actually, I'm looking for relationship advice. Okay. So, my boyfriend Eric and I, we've been having trouble, like, communicating, I guess. Like, arguing? I mean, yeah, sometimes. But, like, all couples argue a little. I just want to know how to talk to him better. Like, how to speak his language so we can get closer. How long have you been together? A year and five days. Hmm. So this is serious? <laughs> yeah, I think it is. He's super sweet and he'd be such a great dad someday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Not at all. I think he's great. So many young people have given up the idea of commitment. Tell me a little more about him. He's such a great listener and he cares about the little things. He's smart and hard worker too. And um, <laughs> he's a really great kisser. <laughs> <laughs> he's very caring and he always protects me. I just wish he wouldn't worry so much. What do you mean? He worries about us. <laughs> about me. I mean, I can totally see why. I get so scatterbrained sometimes. Like, I'll forget to call him when I get back safe at night, or I forget to check my phone between classes, and then he doesn't know where I am or if I'm okay. And that's when you have arguments? And that's why I came to see you. Can you teach us to communicate better? Communication is incredibly important in a relationship. So you did the right thing asking for help. How do you feel about doing some homework with Eric and coming back together. <laughs> I, he, he won't be excited, but I think I can persuade him. Good. Here are a few worksheets I want you to work on. These are for you to complete separately. And there is a section for you both to do together. And Lena will find a time that works for you and Eric so we can really work on this. Is that okay? Yes, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Yes? Yeah, Agent Drexler with the Federal Bureau of Interpretation. I'm just calling to interpret for you what Dr. Serrano said this morning. What? Sorry, just trying to be funny. Uh, this is Alex. I, I wanted to apologize. I know what happened earlier was upsetting. How, how are you? I'm fine. I'm still dying. Yeah. I shouldn't have let Sophia interject the way she did. I just... 
I don't understand why it's so hard for people to get that I'm not ready to die. What would it take for you to be ready? I don't know. You know, this question has nothing to do with you getting healed. If you get healed, you should still answer that question. And that's what Dr. Smarty Pants was trying to say? It's not an easy question, but it's one every believer has to answer sooner or later. You've inherited a mansion, so <laughs> what makes you want to stay in the shed? Okay. Deal. What? I'll figure out what it takes to be ready to die, and you figure out what it takes to be healed. Well, wait. Um, you like to challenge, but you don't like to be challenged. That's not how it works. I'll see you next week. Jessica? Is something wrong? Not at all. I just wanted to check on you to make sure you're settling in and have everything you need. Please sit. Oh, that's so nice of you. <laughs> so, how have your first few days been? Um, exciting. I really enjoy working here. It's a great place. Of course, it's also a lot to adjust to, such a new job having been trained as a systematic theologian. I made a mistake today. And Alex was pretty upset. I'm sure he thinks I'm totally unprofessional. But professionalism is only one side of the coin. You see, the problem with Alex is that he lacks to play psychologist. I don't know what it is, some intellectual inferiority complex, maybe. But what he doesn't understand is that students, and especially parents, value Wesley International not only because we provide an excellent academic program, but also, and maybe most of all, because we offer a safe and spiritual environment based on conservative Christian values. So don't worry. You're doing just fine. Thank you. It's so nice of you to check on me. Is it okay if I pray with you? Oh, yes, please. Is my son. <laughs> Morning. 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 <laughs> is it anybody's birthday? No. I brought this for Victoria and Eric to make it less formal. Thank you for helping me with this personality test, by the way. <laughs> Here, this is for you. Wow. Thank you. You don't drink coffee? Oh, I love coffee, but this, we wouldn't call this coffee in Colombia. 
<laughs> Thanks for the non-coffee then. <laughs> mm. That's very sweet. Yeah, that's just who I am. No, I mean the coffee. I like mine black. I know, Alex. It was a joke. Sorry, I'm still working on it. The coffee or the jokes? So, how's it going with Walid? Well, good, I hope. Last time he was really opening up. It'll be fine. Whatever happened with Jessica? She came back. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Her health is still poor, however. Victoria! Hi, I'm sorry, we're late. I know, girls gotta get ready. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric, I presume? That's me. Nice to meet you. Eric, Victoria, this is Alex Drexler. He'll be helping with the personality test. Uh, didn't we already do those? Oh, sorry. Um... Oh no, um, this was just something for you to fill out at home and talk about. Goals, things you want in life. I see. Sorry. No problem. We'll do the personality test now. Yes, no reason to be nervous. <laughs> it's just about to learn each other. Differences, similarities. You can't fail. Well, perfect. Uh, I didn't study at all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Eric, you go with Alex and Victoria. You come with me. And then we can go over them later. Help yourselves with some donuts and we'll get on the way. <laughs> no thanks, uh, we are trying to make healthier choices. That's why we got the gym membership, right Vic? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, you are what you eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you ready, Eric? I'm always ready. Sure. Let's go. Light young gentleman. <laughs> sure. They yeah, are sure taking their time. Oh, perfectly normal. Some people think about every question. Some personality types just breeze through, like you. Or maybe some people know who they are and some don't. We're done. Perfect. So, we'll go over the results and get back to you guys. Okay? Okay. All right. So wonderful to meet you both. Thanks for your time. Guten Appetit. Gracias. Our time is almost up, but we haven't talked about our assignment from last time. How did that go? I am... Um, <coughs> I'm not done yet. It took longer than I thought it would. But did you find something you don't understand? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. What is it? Ta-da! It's me. I don't understand myself. Oh. I see. Interesting. That's for sure. What exactly is it about you that you don't understand? I'm irrational. All this talk about logic. But I'm not logical at all. What do you mean? Okay, so I have pretty average intelligence compared to most people in the world. Topped off with excellent education and opportunities. I'm not afraid for my life. 
and have a coherent worldview that can answer almost any question I come up with. Yes? But still, I keep thinking about superstitious ideas. I know it's all but I, I, I can't let it go. I've come up with psychological explanations, biological explanations, everything I can think of, but I can't get the stuff out of my head. Why do you think that is irrational? Because it's ridiculous. Why am I drawn to these ideas? Why does that quote, the Lord is your God, the Lord is one, hit me so hard? It's no different from other poetry. So why is it so beautiful? Because it's God's word. See, ridiculous. You believe that, not me. This is embarrassing. I should go. No, not at all. It's not embarrassing and it's not irrational. Thank you for, for sharing this with me. Um, there is a Dutch philosopher, Doeber, who showed the scientists always extract aspects of reality for their study and tune out other aspects. He insisted that one should take into account all the aspects, all the data, and human experience is part of that data. Okay. So you're saying... You should take your observation seriously. It's not less valid or rational than any experiment in a lab. You are experiencing a widening of your horizon. You are allowing other aspects than the biological or physical to register. This causes cognitive dissonance because it challenges your dogmatic naturalism. That was impressive. And a little intimidating. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away. Um, this is exciting. All I'm saying is, don't fight it just because it's new. See what it all takes you. I guess that's fair. Is that my homework then? You know, since you mentioned purpose, why don't you think a little more about that? Try out things that you think might give you a feeling of doing something meaningful. Do it. Don't be scared. I'm not scared. I'll prove it. I'll be praying for you. Stop it. <laughs> hey, Jessica, good to see you. Come in. How are you doing? New hairstyle? No hairstyle. It happened. Oh. I lost my hair. <sighs> I'm sorry. It's all right. There are people who don't lose it. I had hoped I'd be that kind of exception, but... Because the first round of chemo didn't do anything, but here we are. Other than that, how are you feeling? <sighs> I'm so glad I just have one dose left. It sucks all your energy. Just, just getting up. Like this. It's taking all the willpower. And you have a lot. Huh. What? How fitting. You're stronger than you seem. Is that a quote? It's the Winnie quote. You're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem. 
wiser than you think. Well, it is fitting. Gravity's working against me. You know, normally I don't play with students. Well, I'm not your normal student. Can't argue with that. So, what about our deal? What about it? Did you figure out how to get me healed? Oh, yeah. I... I found this former priest who can take care of it. He said to meet him at midnight and bring two chickens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually took the whole thing seriously. I figured out how to be ready. I also took it seriously. But there's really not much to figure out about divine healing. Miracles are unfathomable by definition. But... I have started praying for a healing daily. And... I fast one day a week. I'm mustering all the faith that I have. That's all I can do. Thank you. That's... That's more than enough. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and it will move. And what about you? I am not ready because I have a mission to fulfill. What do you mean? I mean, I need to bring more souls to the Lord. It's, it's the burden for souls that God has placed on my heart that's keeping me from peacefully going to rest. <laughs> what? What do you mean? I don't buy it. No, you are not afraid to die. You don't have guilt that's plaguing you. You don't have things that you want to do. No, you're totally unselfish. And the only thing that you want with your life is to serve others. Like you. Mother Teresa on steroids. That's true. <laughs> Jessica. Really? Okay. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong about yourself. Oh, good. You're going to tell yourself. You're smart enough. Lean back, close your eyes. Come on. And now, pull out your inner Sigmund Freud and try to come up with some less noble motives. My inner Sigmund Freud? Yeah. Play psychoanalyst for a moment. What would Freud say? Why are you not ready to die? Surely because something went wrong in my childhood. Mm -hmm. But my childhood was fine. You don't want to get to know your father? I don't want to get to know my father and I don't want to see my mother. And what would Freud say? Why don't you want to see your mother? Of course, he's saying I still feel guilty because I drove a boyfriend away. Why did you drive him away? Because he was a jerk. I was trying to protect her. I'm not asking you. <sighs> because 
because I was afraid of losing her. I wanted her all to myself, like it had always been. So I asked my friend Lara. It took her two days of texting and a couple of nudes to get him to send her a you know pig. So you set up a trap and then you showed the messages to your mom? I'm not proud of it, but it was the right thing to do. Try to get rid of him and you won. We both lost. She broke up with him, but she's never forgiven me. Did she tell you that? I didn't ask her. Why not? Because there was no need. She was devastated for weeks. I've, I've never seen her cry, like... Have you forgiven yourself? For it doesn't think so. Yes? Well, progress. What? You knocked. Very funny. You finish all the donuts? Do you know how much sugar that is? I says I ate them all by myself. Well, how many did you eat? None of your business. Here are Eric's results. Remember, they'll be here tomorrow. Don't need them. What do you mean? It's obvious he's mainly D with some G in there. And he's a bit of a narcissist. But the main issue is that he's and probably physically abusing his girlfriend. That's absurd. Did he say that to you? Of course not. Then how could you possibly know? Apparently, not having a PhD in the wrong field helps. You know, you really should not eat so much sugar. It makes you unbearable. Giving unsolicited advice is a litmus test for a terrible chaplain. I am not a terrible chaplain. You know what the litmus test for a terrible chaplain is? Constantly putting down others. I'm sorry if you need that for your self-worth, but I'm not having it anymore. You are a cynical old man. Go and get some antidepressants instead of making life miserable for everyone else. authority. And in that role, I need to set boundaries, to un 
Christian behavior, even if it comes from a colleague. Not justifying anything, but he has been through a lot. Sometimes he doesn't sleep all night. He comes in, he holds himself together for the students, but that's all he can manage. I didn't know that. What exactly has he been through? I'd be bad to tell you Alex's secrets. He'll let you know someday. He'll never tell me. Got a minute? Sure. Okay, so... I've been listening to my inner Freud. Yes. Yeah. And I thought it would be nice to organize a little get-together for all the people who are important to me. Well, sounds like a good idea. So, the thing is... My dorm room is way too small. So I was thinking maybe we could use your foyer? Where your assistant sits? What, you mean outside my office? Yeah. Oh, you know, we can't just lend our space to any student who wants to throw a party. I know. But like we've established already, I'm not any student. And it's not a party. Hey, I wouldn't mind at all, but you know, the college is pretty rigid about such things. Think of it as group counseling. You'll be there. You're <laughs> invited, of course. It'll have therapeutic value. You'll see. Please? Okay. O okay, we'll sell it as a group meeting. That'll work. Just don't wear cocktail dresses, right? Awesome. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make some calls right away. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Why is life made only for the end? Why do I do all this waiting then? <laughs> Why this frightened part of me that's fated to pretend? Why is life made only for the end? This was amazing. The lyrics are really profound. And you performed it so well. I'm sure everyone loved it. The retirement home crowd is pretty easy to please. If they're awake anyway. So, did you find this to be meaningful? Is music your purpose? Or caring for the elderly? <laughs> I'm serious. Nah. I mean, it was fun. I'll do it again, but it's not going to be my life's work or anything like that. Then why were you so excited that you came right away? Crazy story. So after I was done, people were leaving, but they had to go past me because my mic was by the door. So I said goodbye to them as they went past, and they thanked me and all. That's so nice. And there was this really old man in a wheelchair who was 
asleep or unconscious the whole time. But as the nurse wheeled him out, he suddenly grabbed my sleeve, looked me right in the eye and said, Walid, the Lord is your God. The Lord is one. What? I know. And then his head dropped to his chest and the nurse pushed him out. What? But how did he know your name? Right? I mean, I introduced myself at the beginning, but he was out. And even if he hurt me, where did that quote come from? And when he said, You're God, there was so much gravity in his voice. <laughs> that just gave me his California. <laughs> I can't shake the feeling that this was an answer to my questions. But that's crazy. There's a way to explain all this without God, right? I'm sure that is, but does it matter? What? Of course it matters. There was a French philosopher by the name of René Descartes. More philosophy. <laughs> no, listen! Descartes set out to question everything he possibly could, to believe nothing that could also be doubted. But in the end, the only thing he could not doubt was his own existence. Everything else could be an error. Kind of like in The Matrix, nothing is what you think it is. The Matrix? You've never seen the movie The Matrix? No. Well, you should. Okay, but your point is? My point is that all of us, every scientist, every atheist, every skeptic, has to decide at some point to stop doubting and start believing. Even the car needed God to escape his own skepticism and get back in touch with the outside world. I guess this could be the one thing I decide not to doubt, even though I could. Don't. You won't regret it. But if I go with this, what comes next? I'm not the one you should be asking. Well. If you've encountered someone interesting, you need to go talk to them. Bye. Hi, Alex. Sophia? Are you mad? No. Because you could be. I said things that were inaccurate and exaggerated. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry too. Eric never showed up this morning, by the way. Neither did Victoria. Do you have any way of reaching her? I just hope she's okay. noch ein schlechtes Gewissen, weil wir sie heute Morgen versetzt haben. Sie fangen schon wieder damit an. Ich, ma ich meine ja nur, du willst nicht zu Dr. Sorano gehen, okay? Kein Problem. Aber warum kann ich nicht gehen? Ich habe dir jetzt schon tausendmal gesagt, was ich davon denke, aber bitte, ist deine Entscheidung. Ich 
glaube, ich entschuldige mich nur kurz, dass Sie sie haben warten lassen. Warum sind die anderen immer wichtiger, hm? Mich interessiert ein Scheiß, was ich denke. Ich, hör auf! Es tut mir leid! Ich reise, verdammt, das ganze Haus ist so blöde Kuh. Nein! Bitte. Mach doch einfach, was ich dir sage! Das war meine Mutter's Dress aus Nigeria. Ich habe sie für Tage gelegt, um sie zu tragen. Und dann würde ich das so machen, um in einem dicken Nigerian Akzent zu sprechen. Ich hätte wahrscheinlich mit matching nail polish gehen, aber das ist nur mich. Du hast auch ein Auge für Stil. Hier ist mich. Getting ready for my junior high school graduation. Wow. Oh, look. I did have matching nail polish. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's my mom and me at the airport when we arrived here in Germany. Mm. How old were you? 16. Anyway. Where did you find all those old photos? My mom sent them after I called her. You called her? <laughs> I wanted to invite her to come to my get-together, but I just couldn't get myself to pick up the phone. Eventually, though, my inner Freud got too loud to ignore. So... I sat at my desk and I told myself, you're not getting up until you call. <laughs> I sat there for an hour before I finally touched my phone. I've never been so overwhelmed. It was absurdly hard. When I finally heard a voice, I was just, <laughs> I was just sobbing and saying, I'm sorry, over and over again. Wow. Mm. We talked for two hours. We apologized, we cried, and we laughed. That was really something. We laughed. <laughs> oh. How are you feeling now? Oh, you have no idea. So much lighter. I wasn't aware how, how straining this unspoken tension was for me, emotionally and spiritually. It's like there was a wall between me and God, and it's gone now. <laughs> Looks like a new beginning to me. You're done with your chemo. You've reconciled with your mom. You're doing well. I hope so. No. You're right. I am doing well. Even though I have to do the final MRI to know for sure about my cancer. Can't wait for things to be perfect to be happy. Well said. My mom's words, actually. By the way, she's coming to my little party next week, so you'll get to meet her. I thought this wasn't a party. And you're right to think that, <laughs> because <laughs> as you can see, it's, it's just the continuation of, of the implementation of the therapeutic advice you've given me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Wow. 
Where is the man collar board? Yes? Victoria. I'm sorry, I know I don't have an appointment and I was gonna call, but I don't have your it's number. Okay. I, 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 it's okay. It's so okay, Victoria. Victoria, Victoria, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you. It's my abuela's secret recipe. Para sanar el corazón. To heal the heart. So good. Thanks for all of this. Do you want to tell me what's wrong? Oh, well, you know how Eric and I argue sometimes? Yes. Well, sometimes when it gets really bad, he f freaks out. He freaks out? He, get, he gets mad and and it's like he loses his mind. I can see it in his eyes, you know. They go, they go all cold and it's like he's a totally different person. Doesn't even, doesn't even know what he's doing anymore. What does he say or do exactly? It's not him. He, he's such a good guy, and we both need to work on understanding our feelings. And, and, uh, Victoria, <sighs> am I the first person you've told about this? I wanted to get help sooner, but I was scared. Of course, anyone would be in your situation. But you have to know how grateful I am that you came to me. Asking for help is so brave. This right now, this is courage. I don't feel brave. How do you feel? He loves me and I betrayed. No, Victoria, this is not a betrayal. If anything, Eric has betrayed you. The moment he put a hand on you, he broke your trust. I just, I feel so worthless. And all of this is my fault. Nothing could be farther from the truth. 
You are a child of God, made in His image. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearful, all right? Don't know about the wonderful part, though. No, that's from the Bible. The word fearfully is a good thing in the Hebrew language. It means you are impressive, amazing. Anyone that does not respect you does not deserve you. You have to know that you are worthy of love, so worthy. That's in the Bible? Yes, here. Look at all the highlights. Yeah. I got this Bible at 17 when I received my scholarship for studying in the US. I marked all the verses that gave me positive energy. Mm -hmm. It was not easy being in a foreign country all on your own. You know, why don't you just take it? You can flip through the pages and read the quotes when you feel sad. Are you sure? Si, sí, si, sí, claro. Please take it. Spend time with it. Thank you so much. I promise I'll, I'll take good care of it. And if you need it back for anything, just send me a text. Right. I wanted to give you my number anyway. Let me get my phone. This was delivered for you. Oh. Can I borrow your scissors? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Oh, this is not for me. It says Mr. Alexander Drexler. No, it isn't. It's for you. Sorry? For you. You're very welcome. Ah, oh, this is just what I needed right now. Tough day so far? Yeah, tough, but good. You were right. About? Victoria. Mm. Eric and Victoria. Yes. Sometimes I just hate being right. Did she just tell you? Yes. It was such a huge step for her. Not easy. How did you feel? Overwhelmed, of course. But then I prayed, and God gave me just the right verse for her. I hope it wasn't turned the other cheek. Alex, not appropriate. I assure her that she was fearfully and wonderfully made, and that she deserved only the best treatment. And I gave her my Bible to take home, prayed, and sent her on her way, encouraged and blessed. So you're saying that she told you her boyfriend was physically abusing her, and you gave her a Bible and a prayer? What? What would you have done? Can you reach her in any way? Yes, I have her phone number. Good, because she might be in real danger. 
with a victim of abuse. You have to establish a clear plan of action to make sure she's out of harm's way. If Eric sees the Bible and discovers she's seen you, it might cause him to lose it again. I didn't think of that. Ah, well, yeah. Let's see what we can do. Pour yourself a cup and then we figure out what the next steps are. In fact, pour me a cup too. Sofia Serrano, I, I wanted to ask if you could come by my office first thing tomorrow morning. There are some important things that we did not get to today. I'm too bad I could not reach you. Listen, you have to make sure that you're safe tonight. Don't meet with Eric. Don't let him come to you. And take pictures of your bruises in case you might have to go for a restraining order. What? I know this probably sounds crazy right now, but it's like an insurance policy if things don't work out. Um, also, if there is anyone you trust enough, do tell them what you told me today. I know you probably think it's embarrassing, but it's not. If your parents or one or two of your friends knew, it would help protect you.
Allailwa al sama wa nujum wa amaru amaru wa saharu Wanta wanna ya habibi ana ya hayati an It's an uh, it's an Arabic love song from One Thousand and One Nights. <laughs> Found it on the internet. I really like it. So, how have you been? Amazing, actually. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you remember when I was here a while ago, and and I told you about the mysterious old man at the home? Yes. So, I did what you said that same day. I uh, went outside and I tried to talk to God. I prayed. And it was amazing. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it. It felt like when you're so thirsty after a long day and you finally get a drink, it felt like life. Wow, that's wonderful. And I've been talking to God every day since. I just, I can't stop. It's incredible. And, and crazy stuff keeps happening too. Like at the grocery store, there was this guy outside who needed money. So I prayed if I should give him something because I want to do God's will. And I just had the feeling that I should give him a lot. So I threw in 50 euros, which left me with only 5 euros and 97 cents. I had forgotten my credit card, so what can you buy with so little money? Nothing, right? But when I walked through the store, I saw that they had frozen shami kebabs on sale for 1.99 per package. <laughs> Pakistani kebabs like my mother makes them. <laughs> Isn't God amazing? <laughs> yeah, so I could buy three packages of kebabs for exactly the 5.97 I had left. It's crazy, exactly the amount I had. <laughs> the Lord provides. <laughs> he sure does provide. And since I've been fasting for the last two days, I still have some kebabs left for dinner. Fasting? Yeah, I mean, it. I didn't know it was called fasting then, but I asked God if I should eat, and I just had the feeling that I should just take a couple of days to just pray instead. And I felt great the whole time. Tons of energy, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Did you know that Muslims fast for 30 days? It's a miracle. People are always asking, where is God? Well, just look what millions of Muslims do each year. <laughs> but they do eat and drink after sunset during that time. They do? I mean, okay. But still, <laughs> it's amazing. I feel like God is everywhere, but I've never realized it before. I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> Walid, I'm so happy for you. I remember how we first met. You were so frustrated and aimless. And sometimes you even seemed tired of living. I was, but not anymore. You were right about that guy, uh, the part, the zard, uh, the guy who doubted everything. Oh, the card. Yeah, yeah, the card, yeah, he was right. You gotta stop doubting sometime or you'll end up with nothing at all. That's why I haven't told you <laughs> more news. I've changed my major to philosophy. That's exciting. <laughs> you are in for a ride. Like Strossen said, there is no shallow end to the philosophical pool. Yeah, but my dad won't be thrilled. He even pulled some strings to get me into business administration because there is no money in philosophy. He's probably right about that bit. I'm gonna take some religion classes too. Maybe I could minor in theology. Yes, do that. Oh, I can wait for you to start learning more about God and his word. I've learned so much already. You can find amazing stuff on YouTube. And the great thing about YouTube is people can speak the truth there. No university or government filter, no peer review oppression, just people sharing their faith uncensored. It's great. I know, I know. I shouldn't spend all my time staring at screens, and I won't, I promise. Oh, screens. Uh, I've watched that movie, uh, The Matrix. Oh yeah? What did you think? Love it. It's a great parable for what is happening in our world. And I totally get what Neo is going through. So, you're Neo? 
Yep. <laughs> In your mafias, you gave me the pill. Thank you for the compliment. I, uh, I gotta run to class, but I'd like to pray with someone else for a change. Uh, can we try it? Absolutely. Sí, super feliz, mamá. Si eras qué cambiado está el muchacho. Se lo ve entusiasmado, super feliz, quiere cambiar su vida. Sí. Yo creo que él vino aquí pensando que solo lo iba a escuchar. Pero tú ya me conoces. Yo no paro hasta conseguirlo. ¿Quién? ¿El muchacho? No. No, era un ateo total. Un escéptico. Eh, no creía en nada. Sin rumbo. Y es increíble lo rápido que fue avanzando. Yo no me hubiera imaginado que alguien aceptaría a Jesús tan rápido. Hi, Mr. Drexler. Hi. I'm Dana, just as mom. Oh, so good to finally meet you. Please call me Alex. I'm very glad to meet you, Alex. Jess has told me you've been very helpful through this whole process. And I wanted to thank you for that. Well, she did all the hard work. I just provided a listening ear. She's quite something. Yes, she is. So, watch it later, okay? Sure. I could take a liking to group counseling. Are we going to get in trouble? Not if you don't write us out. Well, I'll let you welcome your back then. First, I gotta steal a box of pizza for lunch tomorrow. Okay, party people, if you could all migrate over here to the couches, please. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank my cousin Rod for the sweet music setup. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, also, there's going to be some karaoke. <laughs> really though, I want to thank everybody for being here today. I know this was super last minute for some, but it means a lot to see all of you. These past eight months have been brutal, to put it lightly. I've had two rounds of chemo and one surgery. It's been really tough. Thank you to all of you for helping me get through this. You know, we, we always say that we should never take life for granted, but we really do. And when I became sick, I had to face the fact that my life consisted entirely of distractions. <laughs> Even though I was a Christian, deep down inside I had nothing to carry me through such a crisis. Um, so what this ordeal has taught me is that I need to build my life on something that cannot be taken away. Something I can't really take for granted on something eternal. Love of God. And by relying on him, I have found peace. 
See, Alex, I told you this would be a group counseling session. <laughs> and I'm just getting started. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I went to my checkup this week. Turns out the cancer is as aggressive as its host can sometimes be. It's back already in several places. I guess it was never really gone. I know it's a doozy, but I need you guys to trust me. The doctors are out of ideas. They're switching from curative to palliative care. It's it's okay. I'm I'm okay. Just a quick mom intermission. Um, look, I, I know this sucks for everyone. I mean, mostly me, but, you know. So I'm beyond treatment. But I need you guys to trust me. <laughs> right now, I'm in a place where my mind is finally at peace. And I'm strong enough to face reality. I, I don't want this to be a sad thing, though, okay? It's not. We're here to celebrate life and be together. And that's what we're gonna do. And I know a party isn't complete without gifts. So, I wanted to pass out a few things. Casey. You remember this? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I wore it to the last concert we went to together. And I know how much you loved it. Remember I told you that, that I could wear it to the next one. I want you to have it. That way you can take me with you to the next one. Here. Just no country, okay? <laughs> I promise. got this when we went to Croatia a few years back. <laughs> oh, I remember the water was so blue and the sky was... The sky was perfect. It sounds corny, but I don't think I've ever been as carefree as I was that day. <laughs> See, that right there. You always make me laugh, no matter what's going on. And laughing is as close to carefree as most people get. This one's for you. That's how you wear a hat. Come on now.
okay. Jessica, I, I don't understand. Why didn't you come to me to talk about it? We, we could have found ways to help you. You did help me. But it doesn't have to be like this. You know, I know specialists, the, the best in their fields. They can see you and come up with a plan. There are other treatments Alex, out there. We just Alex. have to look. At the beginning of this, weren't you the one trying to get me to face reality? I just didn't want you to get hurt during the process if things didn't turn out. If being the key word. I, I never meant to discourage you or to make you turn away from hope. There still is hope, Jessica. I have hope now. Thanks to you. Hope. Hope for a new life. One where I'm not in pain anymore. I know it's hard, but having your support right now would mean a lot. This doesn't have to be the end, Jessica. <laughs> it's not. Depending on how you look at it, it's actually the beginning. Jessica. I, I wanted to give you this. The first time I came to your office, you were reading Winnie. I thought you might like this. I used to hold it when I was scared. I'm not scared anymore. Thank you, Alex, for everything. I'll be back in a minute. Morning. Morning. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. 
I know how you feel. Can't believe what happened last night. Me neither. Well, okay. Jessica's mom apparently knew about it. But for the rest of us, it was a shock. Absolutely. I'm still processing it. Me too. Hey, Emma. Good to see you. Hey, Alex. How are you? Fine. How about you? I'm fine. Thanks. Come in. Come in. Let me help you with that, dear. It's a skill I had to learn, you know? What is? Throwing food away. I had never done that until I went to the United States on a scholarship. What did you do with leftovers? We never had any. After my dad died, we were pretty poor. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. The first time I ate at the cafeteria at my college, I still remember. They had kind of like a moving shelf mm -hmm. yeah. where you put your trays and it takes them back into the kitchen. And when I saw that people only ate half of what they had put on their plate, or even less, I thought of Alfredo and my mama. I started crying. I must have looked pretty foolish standing in front of the conveyor belt sobbing. It's a gift, really, not to take things for granted. Um, will you be okay finishing up on your own? I need to get ready for Victoria. Yeah, of course, dear, no problem. Thank you. How is everything? Pretty good, I guess. I did what we talked about. Did you run into Eric around here? Once, but he just looked the other way. And has he contacted you outside of school? Since I broke up with him? No, but... But I almost called him twice. Why do you think you wanted to call him? Good that you didn't, by the way. I don't know. Did you feel lonely? No, I don't think so. I don't really mind a long time. And I've been seeing some of my friends from before, too. That's good. I guess I wanted to tell him I'm sorry for how it all turned out. And I wanted him to know that, that this wasn't easy for me, that I'm not this heartless girl who can just like drop him and move on. You don't want him to think badly of you? Mm-hmm. Not after all we've been through, you know? After all you've been through, why is it still important for you what he thinks of you? You care what people think of you, don't you? Of course. I think we all do. Instinctively. Because we are social creatures. God made us that way and that's good. But since we live in a fallen world and people are mean or ignorant or indifferent, we have to be careful whose opinion we care about. We might get used, or manipulated, or get hurt. But then what's the solution? Well, I would say, always ask yourself if the other person is right in what they think. Then you should care. 
and try to change or apologize or whatever. But if the other person is wrong and you're right, then you should ignore them because they need to change, not you. If Eric thinks you're mean, he's clearly wrong. But how can you be sure? I mean, how do you know you're right? Well, you need some kind of moral compass, principles you've decided to follow. I thought I could follow Eric. I trusted him. But I guess I picked the wrong compass. That can happen. Is the dilemma of moral relativism. That's why I've decided to put God first. His guidance is a compass that hasn't let me down yet. I still miss him. I understand. But you have to remind yourself that even people we care about can be wrong. You exist independently. Their thoughts or actions have no effect on who you are or how good or bad you are or how much you're worth. Last night, I thought I heard his key in my door and I was so happy I forgot to be worried. But that's impossible, right? I guess. Because he doesn't have a key anymore. I mean, he probably threw it away. Victoria, either you get that key back or the lock needs to be changed. He could come in any time and hurt you again. This is serious. Text him right now and tell him that he needs to drop off the key at the chaplain's office today. But isn't that just like rubbing salt in his wounds? Victoria, you have to protect yourself, not him. Where is your phone? Victoria, where is your phone? Yes? Dr. Serrano, Vicky requested that I leave her key with you. I don't know if she informed you about it. You know, um, I, I really think that this whole thing is just a big misunderstanding. Eric, I it's too late for that. You don't even know me. I think that Victoria knows you, and she has made a decision. End of story. Why won't you let me finish? She made that decision because you told her to. Please leave now. I'm not leaving before you have listened to what I have to say. I'm also a student at this school. If you don't leave immediately, I'm calling the police. And then you'll no longer be a student at Wesley. We're not done yet.
Come in. Hey. Hey. How are you? Good to see you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How's it going? This day was really crazy so far. But that just comes with what? What is it? I did it. I did it. What? What did you do? I converted. I gave my life to God. <gasps> what <a> lead? <laughs> It was crazy. So there's this guy I'm following on YouTube, right? And after this one webinar, he asked if we wanted to, you know, officially profess our faith. And first I was like, nah, I don't know. But then I asked God if I should do it. And I just had the feeling that this was like, you know, the moment. So I just did it. I, I just said the words. <laughs> wow. You keep surprising me. <laughs> What do you mean? I testified that there is no God. I, I know the Shahada, but that's what you say to convert to Islam. And I'm officially a Muslim now. Why did you become a Muslim? Because if you find truth, you should follow it. And it's the faith of my ancestors too, at least on my mother's side. My, my father will probably disinherit me. He's a very devout Christian. But a follower of the Prophet should be ready to face persecution just like the Prophet did. I came here to thank you. You, you started me on this journey. Walid. I'm a little surprised. The last few times we talk, I was under the impression that you were learning about the Bible and listening to Christian preachers on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I, I did for a while, but it was all the self-righteous Western capitalist stuff. And, and you're the one who taught me about purpose. And these Christian preachers, they don't have it. But once I got into the Quran, everything started to feel right. I think you'd like it, actually. It's like the Bible got me thinking about all these big questions, and then the Quran had all the answers I was looking for. How can the Quran be a fuller revelation of biblical truths if it contradicts the previous revelation, the Bible? The Bible is actually full of mistakes. Says the Quran. And science, too. I saw this video where uh, theologians and historians talk about the contradictions and repetitions in the Bible and how different views were mixed up together over time. They say that if you look at the archaeological evidence, it doesn't match up at all. It's mixed masala. But do you know what those scientists say about the Quran, Walid? I would be very careful. All who take the historical critical sword will perish by the historical critical sword. But we can talk about this next time. I have a lot to digest. You're not mad, are you? No. Just surprised. Can't you be happy for me? I mean, the Lord is one. The Lord is God, right? This is what Islam is all about. This is what it says on your picture. I think we call it a day. Walid was your son. Yeah. He's got his mother's last name. And her work ethic.
So how are things going with him? He seems to really be changing for the better. Absolutely. Um, he is opening up and considering new perspectives on life and the big questions. Wonderful. Mm. It's all very fresh, of course. <laughs> um, hard to tell yet where his path will lead. Of course. But it's safe to say that you've made a great impact on his life. Just like I expected. Alex could never have done that. Thank you, as a boss and a father. Well, I have to get to my next meeting. Keep up the good work. Thank you. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. See ya. Sophia, I think she's not doing so well. Okay. Hey. What's going on? Today was just a bit overwhelming. The Jessica and everything? Yes, that too. And also, Eric was here and kind of threatened me. What? Yeah. But what lead worries me much more. What's up with him? He's thin, son. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I guess. It's in their mutual interest not to shout that from the rooftops. But Dean will be very happy now his son believes in God. That's the problem. What's the problem? Is he an atheist again? No. He's become a Muslim. I didn't see it coming. I was so blind, so naive. I fail. You haven't failed. Yes, I have. I failed Dean and I failed God. First of all, as far as I know, Walid is still on academic probation. So he's still coming to see you. So it's still too early to judge the whole mission of failure. He's professed his faith in Mohammed. 
Second of all, how did you define your mission in the first place? If, like you told me, Walid has turned his life around, gotten a grip on his studies, kicked his gaming habits and, and found purpose and meaning, isn't that at least partly a success? We've already talked about this with Jessica. My mission, the mission for which Dean has hired me, the mission that Jesus gave us is to make disciples of all people. It's nice to help them live a better life, but really, it's about eternity. I don't care if Walid feels fulfilled when he dies, if he's going to be dead forever. Why did you become a chaplain? And I don't mean to give back, to make a difference, to serve others, blah, blah, blah. No, I mean, what's driving you deep down inside? What does that have to do with Walid getting lost? What is your motivation? Love? Fear? Inferiority? You know, a lot of people use faith as a way of covering up their own insecurities. They are not facing and overcoming them with the help of God. No. Rather, they use their faith to boost their ego and feel superior. I do that too sometimes. Faith then becomes a kind of competition, you know, with winners and losers. And then if someone like Walid rejects your faith, He's practically saying that your superiority is nonsense. And then it gets personal. He's taking away your pious fig leaf and your insecurities are exposed. What does that have to do with me? The way you insist that you failed. You sound to me like you participated in a competition and, and you lost it. And, and you take that personally. My work for the students is not a game to me. I know, and I didn't mean that. I'm just saying that passing on one's faith, even with the best intentions, can be a way of acquiring self-worth. So you're saying I'm doing this for myself? No, Sophia, I'm just saying that... Now is really not a time. But I know, but, but times of crisis can be opportunities to understand yourself better. <laughs> I will not be lectured by someone who hides his bulimia. was a coach in the Zweite Bundesliga. And my mom a PE teacher. So I come from a family of athletes. And I have good genes, apparently. <laughs> Fact is, back home we always ate as much as we wanted, which was a lot. But we burnt it all, so it wasn't a problem. We never had patience with, for overweight people. I can still hear my mom complaining about obese kids in her school. 
So the reward center in my brain was programmed on food. And I was instilled with a moral imperative to stay slender. <laughs> Turns out, these two don't go together so well. man with, with an office job. The only way not to get fat was to separate eating from digesting. And there you have it. When was your family tragedy? Three years ago. Now you binge eating. I'm not binge eating. I'm, I just eat more calories than my body requires. Like a family pizza all on your own? Yeah. Which you throw up immediately. <sighs> Sounds bad now that you say it. Then how often do you do that? a week, maybe three or four. It wasn't that much in the beginning. I'm pretty sure if you Google bulimia, that's what you're going to find. What do you want me to say? My name is Alex, and I have an eating disorder. I could just blame it on you, you know. <laughs> ah, and Dean had it all planned so nicely. Get his son into the school, put him on academic probation, hire an attractive young chaplain, <laughs> and surely the boy will come around. But it didn't work out that way. He'll hate us both. He doesn't hate me. It just is a strange way of showing his affection. We'll both get fired. Yeah. 
We're going down together. Like Thumb and Louise, driving towards the cliff. Let's not get caught. Yes. Sorry for interrupting, but there's a young gentleman here who'd like to speak to a chaplain. Uh, of course. Uh, sorry about the mess. It's been a really tough day for both of us. No problem. Um, actually, I just wanted to ask if maybe one of you could study the Bible with me, I guess. I talked to my religion teacher and he referred me to you. Uh. Of course, uh, uh, Josh. Of course, Josh. Um, my partner here, she's a, a luminary in biblical studies. You'll find no one better. I don't know about that, Josh, but... She has a PhD. <laughs> I'd be happy to share what I had found. That would be great, thank you. You're welcome. Just make an appointment with Lena. All right, perfect. Um, I guess I see you. See you, Josh. Bye. 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 You'll be a Hindu in six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do Hindu in four weeks. Muslims are a lot harder. Mm -hmm. After a few months of meeting with me, Jessica decided the best way forward was to die. Beat that. That's not funny. Oh, it's Victoria. Well. At least she's out of trouble now. Thank God. 